Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a 60 watt portable solar panel from Mesuvia. And there is a feature about this solar panel which I think you might like. So let's get started. Okay, when you first open up the box, all you're going to get is this solar panel wrapped in some uh, bubble, bubble wrap. So uh, here is the panel. And then the back of the panel, there is a zip up pouch. And when you open that up, you have a little baggie that has, it looks like, it looks like a 5521 uh, cord. And then uh, a, three, a set of three adapters for that cord. And also some carabiners. And also there is a, uh, a small user's manual and a warranty card. But the thing that I like about this portable solar panel is I believe it's a lot more versatile than your regular portable panels. As you can see, it does have the power, uh, like the, the power brick kind of item right here, which gives it, uh, you know, you can power up a USB device. Uh, you can also power up a quick charge USB device and a, uh, a type C USB C port. Uh, and then also it has the DC, uh, the, the DC output for the cord that was provided. But then right here, it also has dedicated MC4 connections. So you can bypass this altogether and just use it as a regular solar panel going to, uh, you know, a small solar charge controller. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to be taking this guy outside in a little bit and we're going to plug in a, a, a power station here to make sure that everything works, see what kind of power we're getting. And then we're going to connect it to a small solar charge controller and see what kind of power we get from that. First, let's get the dimensions of this uh, portable panel. Uh, first, we'll do it folded up. We're looking at 16 inches across by a little under 16 and a half inches tall. And the width is seriously, I mean, it's like a quarter of an inch. It's really nothing. I mean, if you look at it right there, it's, it's nothing. And then if we unfold it, including the flap, you're looking at about 38 inches across. Now it does look like this uh, solar panel has a PET coating, I believe. Um, I don't think this is the EFTE coating that I feel is more robust. So this is not really meant to be uh, staying outside overnight in the rain, all that stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's more like for your weekend camping trips. This panel also does come with two stands. So you could, you'll be able to stand, you'll be able to stand it up at a 45 degree angle. And it does again, come with its own zipper pouch, which you can hold all of the extra accessories that you're going to need. Okay. Some of the other specifications about this panel, uh, like I said before, it is a 60 watt panel and the user's manual does state that it's got a 23% efficiency rate. The operating voltage is 18 volts and the operating amperage is 3.33 amps with an open voltage of 21.6 volts and a short circuit current of 3.6 amps. The USB A's that are in the power brick inside uh, will support up to 18 watts and the USB C will support up to 45 watts. And something I found kind of interesting in the manual is that it says that the DC output, which would be the output for um, like if you're going to plug it into a power station, it says that the DC output is only 12 volts at three amps. So that only gives you 36 Watts out of a 60 watt panel. So that's why I want to take a power station outside and kind of see what numbers we get. And also the weight of this solar panel is a little bit under four pounds. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and grab a power station and a solar charge controller and a battery. And we're going to be connecting both those up outside to see what kind of power we can actually get. Now, mind you, it is only 9.30 in the morning, so we're not gonna be getting full sun, but we will be able to compare our power station to our solar charge controller to see the, the differences in what kind of power we do get. And I will also be comparing it with this Flashfish 50 watt panel. And the one thing I do kind of notice is that this 60 watt panel, it is actually smaller than this 50 watt panel. So uh, that's kind of a good start right there. We're actually looking at the ability of getting 10 more watts from a smaller form factor 
than this last year model of from the flash fish company all right we are now outside and we have all of our stuff that we're going to be using to test first we have the original flash fish 50 watt panel right here and then now we have the uh, 60 watt panel and we are going to be connecting these both to a blue eddy eb3a and the blue eddy we're going to be connecting it just straight to the to the uh the barrel port to see what we get and then we're also going to be using the mc4 to barrel port adapter and we'll see what we get from that and then also we have the uh the pecron e300 lfp and we will be connecting uh directly to this barrel port and then also we will be uh connecting it to the uh the usb-c port directly from the usb-c port on this uh, on this uh, solar panel and we'll see if we can get uh, some good wattage out of that so let's go ahead and set all this up and get started first we're going to see what the flash fish can give us remember it's a 50 watt panel so if we get between 30 and 35 watts out of it that'll be pretty good and we're going to be using the original cables that come with the panels so there isn't any uh any bias between the cables now the one thing i don't really like about the flash fish even though it's really nice flat and portable it doesn't have any legs so you basically have to like stand it up or put a power station under it something like that in order to keep it upright uh this 60 watt panel it does come with legs so that's a nice little bonus all right let's face it towards the sun try to give it a nice 45 degree angle we got it plugged in and for the EB3A, we're gonna need an adapter. So let's go ahead and plug in that adapter. And both of these solar panels do come with uh, eight millimeter adapters that will work for the EB3A. So that's always nice. All right, and if, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and put the EB3A uh, app on the screen right here, or here, or wherever. And uh, we can see that the, the, actual, the, the unit is only at 6% battery life, uh, but we are getting 38 watts of power from this 50 watt panel which is pretty decent for a 50 watt panel uh you know i'm not i'm not too disappointed in that really that's pretty good let's go ahead and set up the 60 watt panel right next to it and see what we get from that okay we're going to go ahead and unplug the the 50 watt panel and plug in the 60 watt panel and see what happens goes to zero plug in the 60 watt panel the eba the eb3a is only accepting seven watts from this panel from the DC port that's on the junction box the power box that's inside but that's why we have multiple configurations we have multiple power stations we have multiple cords so we can find out you know if we can get better output by either using you know the the MC4 to the 8 millimeter plug for the EB3A or if the EB3A just doesn't like this panel and we should try a different power station because these uh, these solar panels are universal so they're going to work with a lot of power stations but they might not work the best with a certain ones so that's what we're here to find out so we're going to go ahead and plug in the MC4 connectors of this panel to the EB3A using this adapter that comes with the EB3A and we'll see what we get from there Okay, I've got the MC4 to 8 millimeter plug attached. We'll go ahead and plug it in. And we'll see what the EB3A says now. There we go. 28 watts. 45 watts. 49 watts. Yeah, so look at that. We're looking at 49 watts. You know, that is, what's that? That's a 20%, that's 20% better than what we're getting from this uh, flash fish panel. And that's what's nice about this panel. This 60 watt panel, I like it because it does come with, you know, it comes with that barrel port, but for some reason it doesn't really like the EB3A, but you use the adapter with the EB3A, the MC4 to eight millimeter adapter, and you're getting 49 watts from a 60 watt panel, which is very good. That's, that's really good. You know, we're looking at 80% 80 uh, 80 rate from this 60 watt panel. We brought out the Pecron too, so let's go ahead and, and hook up the Pecron and we'll go ahead and load up the app and we'll see what we're getting from that. Okay, we have the Pecron all set up now, so let's go ahead and open up the app and put it right here. And as you can see, the Pecron is actually a 47% state of charge and we have it on the input setting. 
of the app so we can see what our input is. So we're gonna be using just straight 5521 cables. We don't need an adapter or anything like that. So we're just gonna go straight into the Pecron with the 50 watt panel. So let's see what we get from that. All right, and from the 50 watt panel, it looks like we're getting about 32 watts. So a little bit less than we were getting from the EV3A from the 50 watt panel. So let's go ahead and swap it out with the 60 watt panel and we will see what the difference is. All right, plugged in the 60 watt panel and it looks like our input is only 26 watts. So a lot better than the EB3A, but still not as much as the Flashfish. So that barrel port, uh, I mean, it will charge up your power station, but I don't think it's the optimal way to charge up your power station. I think having an MC4 connection and then having it to an adapter to your power station is definitely the best way to go. And I think that's what the main thing of this panel is, is those MC4 connections, which makes it great for being able to charge up almost anything. And let's see what happens when I plug in a USB-C cord from this uh, junction box and plug it directly into the, uh, the Pecron. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have just this cord doing it, and then I'm gonna put in both of them and see if I can actually get, you know, get more wattage out of it. So we'll just try it and see what happens. And plugging in just the USB-C port, plugging it into the Pecron. All right, and using the USB-C port, it looks like we're getting 36 watts out of this, out of this panel. And the max, the max on this, uh, on this USB-C plug on the back of the panel is 45 watts. So we're, we're actually looking pretty good. That, that's a pretty good efficiency for what the output of the USB-C port is compared to what the panel can give. So it does seem like if you have it plugged into the junction box, it does kind of limit it to that, uh, to that 12, that 12 volts by three amps kind of, um, uh, I guess that limit, you know, you're only going to be looking at 36 watts, no matter how you plug stuff in, if you're using that junction box. But if you're using the MC4 connectors, I mean, we're getting 47 watts. So that is pretty good. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the MC4 connections because sometimes your solar panels and your power station or what you're trying to charge up is not going to be very close. So let's try that out instead. So now I'm gonna be running it from here and I'm gonna have my power station way over there, which is about a 20 foot run using MC4 connectors. They are 10 gauge connectors, so that should be plenty of wire uh, to be able to hold the voltage and amperage, so we shouldn't have much voltage loss. And I have it connected to a Power Queen uh, 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. I will be able to connect to the Bluetooth on that so we can see the power going in. All right, MC4 connector. And it looks like the cord is about a foot and a half. Up, oh, yeah, about a foot and a half that comes out. So you'll definitely need an extension cord if you want to power something further away. Connect these up. All right, we should be getting power. Let's go over to our, uh, our power queen to see what we're getting. Okay, here is my setup for the Power Queen. I just have the Bougie RV PWM solar charge controller. It's a 30 amp variation. Uh, wired directly into the Power Queen 12.8 uh, volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the Power Queen, uh, the Bluetooth on it to see what kind of power we're getting. And as you can see at the bottom, we are getting 37.8 watts. That is roughly what we were getting from that 50 watt panel. But you have to remember that, you know, the wiring is substantially longer. We're looking at 20 feet of wire, so there might be a minimal voltage loss, but not terrible. And also we're using a PWM, which doesn't have the efficiency of an MPPT solar charge controller. But I wanted to go with cost rather than quality, I guess. Not quality, but technology. Yes. So... Uh, and at this rate, it would take four and a half hours to charge the remaining part of this battery. Okay, so what are my thoughts of the 60 watt panel from Misuvida? I like it. It's, it's good. I love the fact that it has MC4 connectors. That, 
I think is a game changer. If you want to get multiples of these and connect them in series or parallel to get either more amperage or more voltage, go right ahead. It doesn't matter because that MC4 connection kind of bypasses that junction box altogether. So it gives you all the power that you need that you can get from those panels. The USB-C port does say that it can support up to 45 watts, but I was only able to get up to uh, you know, 36, 37 watts out of it. Um, and then when I plugged into uh, the 12-volt the adapter that's included in that junction box, when I plugged it into that EB3A, man, it didn't like it. It only gave us like 7 or 8 watts. And then when I plugged it into that Pecron, I think it gave us like, what, 26 or 27 watts out of that, out of that barrel port adapter. When I plugged in the EB3A to the MC4 connection, you know, it gave us like 45, 46 watts, which is great for a 60-watt panel. And then when I use the, uh, the, the USB-C plug directly into the USB-C input-output port of the Pecron, you know, it gave us like 37 watts, which is pretty much probably the max uh, that you would be getting from that junction box. So definitely the options that this panel gives you uh, is a great bonus. So I would say when it comes to portable panels, this 60 watt panel is pretty nice. If you're just going on you know, on a weekend camping trip, and you just need a little bit of extra power, this thing can definitely power pretty much whatever you throw at it. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about this 60 watt panel, please leave them in the comments, and I will leave a link to this product in my description if you want to look further into it. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.